I am Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and we would like to welcome <clears throat> everybody to our Making of Saturday Night Live panel for NBC Universal. Our panelists today are Jody Mancuso, wig designer and hair department head, Louis Zakarian, makeup designer and makeup department head, Tom Broker, uh, producer and costume designer, and Mikey Day, Hi. cast member. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Hi. 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 Thanks for having us. So here we are at the end of season 49. That's such a huge number. And, you know, SNL, it's not a spring chicken anymore. So how do you all go about keeping things fresh, keeping things exciting so that the show feels just as relevant today as it did back in 1975? Um, just trying to keep up with new technologies and new processes. I mean, one of the things we we looked into and started doing a lot more of is 3D printing and 3D scanning of process of things. Uh, a lot of the makeups this season were sculpted di digitally and printed. Um, trying to keep up with the new technology really has been one of the big things, especially with the turnaround times we have. It's it's really made us be able to produce things in and in, you know really fast and really cleanly. I will add to that one of the greatest. That is one of the the big changes over the past few years is the use of the, the 3D printer and the digital scanning and all that. One of my most favorite things uh, mm. this past season was Louis, two things, I, and I didn't know that this was even possible, is that we he made us a set of abs. Uh, he sculpted a set of abs out of silicone for first ego. And um, we just threw it on a pair of like uh, on a leotard and then put a zipper on the back. And then we did a really great little silicone fat pad for Jake on the last show when he was on the bicycle. Mm -hmm. And that to me just is such a mind blowing change for me, like going forward, because now I can be like, oh, gone are the fat pads of yesteryear, which are made out of like, mm -hmm. you know fabrics and all these sort of stuff he actually can do in a day a day and a half two days a new beautiful silicone fat that we can just zip onto the actor as opposed to creating some ridiculous hans and franz sort of uh <laughs> gorilla hey, those were pretty state-of-the-art um, <laughs> like move you know, back in those days that was as good as we could get but now because of all this technology everyone's developing and everyone's using it's amazing what we've been able to sort of um, make things and transform things that way. And it's crazy how much it's changed this season alone. I mean, when we did Mikey with the big muscle suits, when uh, Timothy Chalamet hosted, oh, right. we had to do the old style plaster casts and all that. But when we, when by the time Jake had come in, we had new 3D printers that were super fast and we were able to print his whole torso in one day. Whereas, mm did Mikey at the beginning of the season, we didn't have that kind of, those printers weren't around. So it it's changed like, really fast. It's like a mad scientist lab in the <laughs> makeup lab. There's always like those 3D printers working. It looks very futuristic. But I remember my first, when I started on the cast to get the face mold for prosthetics, Louis, you had that, like, I had to go and get the plaster all over Sil my face. Silicone and plaster, yeah. And then, Recently, I went in and you had some weird camera and you I just had to sit there and you just did a 360 around my head. So yeah. the technology since I've been in there has and anything that sit in that claustrophobic goo is fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it's it sounds, it's yeah. also amazing how just Louis, you know, being able to do that has affected uh yeah. you, know, you know what I mean like it trickles off to help me as well because we build the wigs and normally if he was building some kind of hat or head piece I probably wouldn't get that until late Friday and he can do it quicker for me so that we can do a custom wig fit to it and it helps me and the shop work quicker um so it's it's actually a fantastic um tool fit all the departments and I mean, he's helped probably every department. Yeah, no, exactly. He, yes, I mean, he's even he's three D digitally printed uh, buckles for us, like on the Oppenheimer 
uh, mm-hmm. cold uh, monologue with um, Ryan. We had Louis 3D printed all of the Oppenheimer uh, belt buckles that the girl dancers were wearing because we couldn't find them anywhere. So we had a sketch of it and we knew what it was and Louis was able to do it. So he, like yeah. Jody was saying, he's able to do a lot more, not just in terms of, you know, silicone things and head things and all that sort of stuff. He's helping all of us just sort of really uh, push the, the what we're all capable of doing um, mm-hmm. in a shorter period of time. Louis made a war machine outfit. <laughs> Don Cheadle's character in the Avengers is war machine. <laughs> and this was a few seasons ago. And this sketch was cut after dress. Uh, but they 3D printed War Machine is Iron Man's friend with, I mean, it's basically a black and silver uh, suit, basically, that looks like Iron Man. And they did it in a day. I mean, that's insane. All crazy. three of these, I'm going to gush over all of you. All three <laughs> of these individuals are mad geniuses, by the way, and work under basically cartoonish time constraints. I mean, Wednesday night is is when the show is picked. All the sketches have been read and the meeting with Lauren and all the producers and head writers goes down and they pick what is going to be in the show. And then really, we talk on Wednesday, but you guys don't start getting to work on it till Thursday, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. if, you, if you count 12, if you count 12.01 a.m., um <laughs> Wednesday night as Thursday, then yes, yeah. we start Thursday. <laughs> and sometimes like this is whoever writes a piece is produces it and is in charge of it. So Wednesday night, if your sketch is picked, you meet with all the departments. So you meet with these three. And sometimes myself, I've been in this category a lot, but sometimes a writer may might not have the most specific vision for either a makeup look or a wig or wardrobe and these three will have to figure it out right there's been times where like with david pumpkins jody it was just like he's a weird man and you just kind of have to go (laughs) off of that and then they create sometimes these iconic looks with all these characters they've worked on in the past so it's pretty amazing what you guys do oh thank you mikey you too little buddy but that's the that's, I mean, but that is you too sort, of sort of going back to your question on it in a way is that you know every week is different and every week yeah. is the same and mm-hmm. so that's also what keeps it going and we have incredible actors and writers like mikey um who help us push the ideas and and the events of the the week and um we use as inspiration and springboards for the the things and our looks and as they evolve we are evolving with them and Mm -hmm. so it's all happening in real time and so we're unlike a lot of programs in that way is that so much of what we do is influenced by what the week has been and so that's a way in which also the show has been able to evolve and continue to change as well as these new technologies and then these you know new actors coming in and new writers is that the show is forced to every week confront to what is going on in culture and sort of have that be reflected in what we're doing as well. And so that actually is one of the ways in which the show, I think, maintains its relevance and 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 it sort of pushes itself continually to, you know, not reinvent itself, but sort of be in line with the times and reflect what's happening as it's, as it's going on. You got us back on topic. Spoken like a true yeah. producer, You're Tom. I, I would love to know from each of you, how long have you all been working on the show? And what do you know now in 2024 that you wish you knew on day one when you stepped foot on SNL? And Mr. Butthead, a.k.a. Mikey Day, I, I'd love oh, to start no. with, you, with you on Forever this. known as Butthead. <laughs> you created it. I know. <laughs> on my gravestone. <laughs> out of everything I've done, it'll say here lies butthead. Um, how long have I started as a writer in 2013? 
So what, 11 seasons now, 11 years, that's a long time. What, and your second part was, what do I what wish do you know? I would have known? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot, I mean, you definitely learn as you go. Um, there's definitely no training wheels, I feel like, at SNL. I feel like you get there and it's like, all right, go, do the job. And you're kind of learning that's on the hard. job. Yeah, on the job. Mm -hmm. I, let's see, I, there's, I mean, so many things. There's one small, I remember when I would first go in and talk to wardrobe costumes, I would talk about a sketch and then they'd say, Tom, you probably remember this. Where does it take place? As in the <laughs> coast? And I grew up in Southern California, which is, t-shirts maybe a hoodie like there is there's no weather so i would learn about oh yeah on the east coast if it takes place in february they're probably going to dress different that sounds so dumb but it was this uh it was a creative aspect that i had often not thought about so well i think i mean i i that's think what comes to mind i mm -hmm. think to your point mikey is i think that is a lot though you're not the only one. I think that is one of the big things that the writers on our show have learned over the process of that is that question and those sorts of questions is right. too, because all of those, you're, you guys aren't thinking in that way. You're thinking in terms of what's the funny, what's the joke, what's the thing. Yeah. But then it's up to the three of us to then dissect, okay, well, what, who are those people? What are those people? What are those people where, how they dress, where, what is the situation? Because that and those questions influence us and then the comedy influences us after that whereas for you guys it's the comedy first and then it's like oh it's this type of person right right yeah it's interesting does it, how does it affect it. wig you know have hats on wigs and and also you know a lot of that comes from there's 12 sketches or, you know, it could be up to 14, 15 now, but you want everybody's sketch to be fairly different, which a lot of you writers at the time don't know, right? Don't you feel <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, no, somebody has a mullet already. And you're like, damn. Right, right. <laughs> the same thing with facial hair. They're always like, oh, your mustaches, goatees. I'm like, no, he's got three mustaches already in five sketches, you know. <laughs> How many flavor saver characters have you? <laughs> On Louis, you're always like, this guy seems like he'd have a flavor saver, huh? He's got a patch. He's got just gross, that. little. Louis, let's stick with you. When, when did you start? And, and what do you wish you knew back then? Uh, I started in 90, the, the end of the 94, 95 season. So it's going on almost 30 years now. Um, oh. I wish I would have known how much, how little sleep I would be getting on <laughs> Thursdays and Fridays, on Thursdays and Fridays, because there's times where, like, by the time I get home or to the hotel, I'm turning around and running right back to the studio, especially now with the pre-tapes and the film shoots that we have on Fridays, we'll be building stuff, you know, up until the late hours of Thursday night and then go sleep for two hours and go run to set to be, uh, to put the stuff on. Mm. And Jody. Um, I think this, I started, um, 2002, I think it was Will, uh, Farrell's last year. So I guess 22, 23 seasons. Um, I, I don't, I'm glad I didn't like Tom was saying like, or, or Mikey, it's like, you can't learn this. So I don't know if there would have been anything I wish I knew. Cause I don't know if I would have understood it because there's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. um, but I do wish I knew that we probably could have had a studio to do all those digital shorts in, because right now we film our stuff sometimes in a, a right. studio. We have a studio, and that would have saved me a lot of long nights out in the cold. I will tell you <laughs> that. <laughs> but um, I I don't know. I love the journey from the beginning, quite honestly. Um and I don't know if you could have told me anything then that I would have believed it because it right. was like <laughs> nothing that I've done prior to that. It's its own identity for sure. Yeah. And, and I love your accent, by the way. 
Thanks. It's from the Bronx. <laughs> she's the she's yeah, the real you, Bronx beat. She's I was gonna say you, you might recognize it from a character perhaps that uh has been on the has been on television before. <laughs> the um, real life inspiration. <laughs> and uh, Tom, how about you? Uh I've been here a super long time. There <laughs> um, a you super win. long time. And um uh I think um, I think the biggest thing I've learned is the art of detachment. And now that's not to say that um, that means we don't do our job to the fullest and we don't do our job and we're passionate about what we do. But there's also part of you that has to understand that um everyone's on the same journey and everyone's having the same thing. And at some point there is going to come a time in the week where whatever it is you've been working on is maybe going to be cut or not cut or, you know, and so you have to give over to that process of this is the process of the show. And this is the process. And this is the journey of the show. And at some point, 30 minutes of the show will be cut out and it may be the thing you spent the most time working on during the week. And it may be the only sketch you, you, you know, you're in that week or, or any of that sort of stuff. So I think learning how to not take that personally and learning that the greater good, which is the show, is the true reason we are all here. And so that part and that learning to detach from the the ego of that, I think, is the biggest learning curve of the whole thing. Definitely. I agree with yes, that. That's well said. Uh, I'd love to focus on some specific episodes and sketches uh, from this year in which all of your talents and works were just uh, through the roof. First up, the, the Ryan Gosling episode. We already mentioned Beavis and Butthead. Uh, but that specific sketch with the makeup and the hair um, who wants to talk hmm. about that and what happened when Heidi Gardner turned around and, and started completely breaking down on, on live television? I'm I'm sure it was the makeup and hair that that did it for her. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, all I mean, I'll jump in because the, the clothes were um, a lesser part of that experience. But um, I think what was so great is that there wasn't quite the same amount of time between dress you know dress they didn't have quite enough time to get all of it perfect and they just had maybe 10 or 15 20 seconds more for air to get the makeup perfect and the hair and yeah. just that 15 seconds 10 seconds was enough to make it so dramatically different that Heidi couldn't contain herself because she wasn't prepared, I think, for the visual perfection of what those two things were. I <laughs> wasn't, and I was in my own room. And, I, and, and it is weird to think that 10 seconds could make the complete difference between someone going, oh yeah, that, that is there, and then having it be look completely different enough that it would make her um, crack up. Yeah. That's what I, I, know, I forget. Don't... I forget that Ryan. You guys only had a commercial break to get Ryan into his Beavis stuff, right? For dress, I had, I had a little more dress. I think there was three right ten, and then for air there was three twenty, and that extra ten seconds. Nobody realizes that for us, ten exactly. seconds is is like ten minutes. We're like, oh, really? Ten seconds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, people don't really understand the speed with which. Uh, the three of us and Mikey can understand this as well is that we have to deal with just sort of in terms of those changes and like Louis said you know 10 seconds is a big deal people don't understand actually what you can do um, in even you know five seconds more it allows because not only they're running across the stage to go to some place so that they can change so that's taken out of the equation you know they're, they're a host for instance is leaving a set and is going to a different place to change their clothes and then going back to a different set. So there's travel time in that Maybe. that you have to deduct from the complete change from one character to another character. So 10 like seconds is a crew. lot of time. Cast members and the host just stand there and you have hair, <laughs> makeup, wardrobe. It's 
the closest analogy is like a Indy 500 pit crew. It's, Do you feel it, quite vulnerable, Mikey, as the actor, having everyone kind of accosting you like that? Not really, not anymore. I'm so used to it. I'm so used to just changing, just being in my boxer briefs, <laughs> changing real quick. And uh, I mean, there's but I do think moves. it is true. But I do think the actor, you know, I think Mikey can attest to this is like the first time it happens and you can tell someone this is going to happen. But that first time, especially for a host and you talk them through it, they're all they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure got it but then the first time it actually happens they go yeah. oh you were that... you were serious that that's what happens i'm like oh right. yeah, yeah this <laughs> this is a real thing yeah yeah but... and it it's crazy what these three i mean do every week but with beavis and butthead specifically it was an interesting process because you have as a reference pictures of them from the cartoon beavis and butthead and they're cartoons so they're very oddly proportioned and they're even weird looking for cartoons but it's interesting just finding the dynamic between because i feel like you could go too insane and we just look like aliens almost so they have to be real people that could physically look like that but also be instantly recognized and that's and that's one of the great things that you know, Jody and Louie and us to an extent as well, is that a lot of the writers do like the cartoons um, <laughs> and they like the cartoon visual and they like what cartoons can do as the only cartoons, cartoons can do with like <laughs> clothes flying off and things. But we we have to take that cartoon and then adjust it to someone's face. Like, you know, <laughs> part of part of it is looking at Mikey's face and trying to translate Mikey's face into the same scale and proportion of what the cartoon has. And that's an art in and of itself, because like Mikey was just saying, trying to figure out just slapping a cartoon onto Mikey's face is not going to be the same thing as creating the effect of what the cartoon does onto Mikey's face. Especially, mm. um, and to go along with the sketch, you know, so I think, uh, Mikey, if you don't remember, um, I'll remind <laughs> you, I um, told you that I was going to make those wigs smaller. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and you and Streeter weren't very happy about it. And because you were excited about it. And I said, no, we ha it, it will play like, better. Trust you, me. You have to trust me. Because it has to be that these two guys look like they went to this AI meeting, right? This this talk. Yeah, this talk. they were allowed into the building. <laughs> I was like, Ac cartoon characters are not going to walk in there. <laughs> they have to look like them. And you trusted me. There was a little pushback from Streeter. And then we just went for it. And then you were both very happy. It, it really worked well. I mean, I trust you. Sorry. Sorry, Lou, I just said I trust you all implicitly now. And oh. Streeter Seidel is the co-writer of the sketch. Sorry to interrupt, Louis. It's okay. <laughs> but that goes with like even that crazy gum thing that we made for you, Mikey, to give you that raised lip with the retainer and the braces and the whole deal. Trying it's to the make centerpiece it, of the look. It, yeah. We're trying to make that and make you still be able to talk and say your lines and not lose you in the whole thing was, yeah. the, was one of the biggest challenges and not go over the top of you know, goes so crazy that makes it still look like it could be somebody who walked in off the street that had that <laughs> that fun filled condition. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan um, Gosling's <laughs> Ryan's uh, monologue that week uh, featured Emily Blunt as a guest star, and and there was all these dancers behind them in in the Barbie costumes. Um, Tom, can you talk a little bit about how you got all of that together? <laughs> so, um, yes, so. <laughs> Um, we found, uh, we actually made all of those Barbie dresses and all the Barbie hats that the, we found the, um, we think we found the original fabric and then we made, um, all of those Barbie dresses, um, the Barbie hats, the shoes, hand painted them all and all that. And then, um, as far as the suits were, the female suits were concerned, then we, 
dealt with the Oppenheimer suit and uh, found uh, Ellen Mirage, a friend of mine. So she told me where the hats came from. Um, so the hat, we called the hat guy and he sent us the hats uh, for the female Oppenheimer dancers. And then um, we used contemporary women's suits for that. And then we had Mikey's suit made uh, based on the original Oppenheimer suit um, tie and belt and that and that was one um, of those you know we couldn't find the belt the, the belt buckle anywhere so we actually Louis uh, 3D printed the belt buckle on all the girls um, and um, you know we worked with everybody uh, the hair and makeup people and you know the girls had hats on so we had to you know adjust their hats and all that sort of stuff and like I said, we hand painted the shoes and, you know, we, we, we tried to match all of it as best we could. It's, it's crazy what you guys do. Every, sometimes so you just go thing. into work costumes and be like, Hey, so we added 10 anthropomorphic uh, pieces of pizza that dance in this sketch. And then Saturday there'll be 10 anthropomorphic slices of pizza costumes i don't know how it happens it feels like there's magic in there and the fact that tom ha you have to research all that and try to get it as right as right. you can. Right. that's also included in that that's always fun friday night we all right and so and sometimes <laughs> we thought like with those dresses we thought oh maybe we can find them online because it's a halloween costume and all that sort of stuff and then that journey took like five hours of wasted time um, yeah. just going down that because you know the fabric wasn't right or the you know we couldn't get them here in time or uh, there was a version in China or whatever and so ultimately <laughs> it's that thing where we have to go talk to the costume shop and um, we had done when Pete was the host we had done uh, a video Pete did a video at the very beginning of the season so we had made that dress once before and the dress, I don't even think the dress actually even made it on. Uh, Chloe Feynman wore that dress in a like a 10 second beat. So we had made our tailor, the tailor shop had already made that dress once before. So we knew where the fabric came from um, and we knew sort of what the silhouette of the dress was. Um, and thank God, I think it was only four dancers and not six dancers, you know, I mean, sometimes sometimes we have to fudge the numbers a little bit and sort of be like, okay, well, we can do four, four dancers. We can't do six dancers. We can't, you know, ultimately also the stage is only so big. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes, you know, but we had a lot of the past, I would say the past six shows, there was a lot of musical monologues mm -hmm. that added, you know, had a lot of, um, were my variety, was... variety, yeah, variety aspect to them. Kristen's, although not musical, was full of people and big and um, <laughs> had the feeling of a musical monologue. And then Maya's was a mashup between Beyonce and Madonna yeah. um, <laughs> with the TV show Legendary. Um, you know, and then Ryan's was the mashup between Barbie and Oppenheimer. And so um, it, 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 the, the ending part of the season became a lot of... Um, Mm. variety aspect to that i loved maya's costume in that mother uh monologue and i actually yeah. they display nbc displayed it at their fyc house and i got to see it in person it's just it's so stunning in, in real life to look at it's a it, it um yeah there <laughs> that foundation underneath there is um you know and uh, we had the guy who uh our head tailor has you know amazing and and how he created that unitard out of without any seams was pretty special um because we knew it couldn't have a seam going down our leg so um it's constructed in a really amazing way you all made maya's beyonce outfit right for the hot yes one and then and then the, well? the, that the next the next uh -huh. sketch after that so um there was a what there was a a moment that was the Mother's Day uh, show. And, you know, I think there was a moment of, of feeling that maybe the Beyonce thing was going to become the cold opening. And we were just oh, like, oh, my God, how, how do we get uh, Maya from <laughs> full, full Beyonce to Dude. monologue Beyonce? 
to just, hot there was, ones there, there, Beyonce? <laughs> there was there was no way we were just like, oh my god, we can't. There, I don't know how that could even happen. But you know, I think it was it, it was great this way, and and we did end up having to make that whole, you know, cowboy cowboy Carter outfit from uh, Maya for that as well. I remember you're like, we had to make the cowboy Carter right outfit right now. There's a there's a moment where she douses herself in milk. Ideally, it would be water. However, <laughs> just throwing that out there. Yes, that was that was, that was a fun journey that week with with Mikey and, and such because they wanted you know it's hot wings and so they wanted some sort of her to be able to do uh you know milk or something and pour it down herself and uh that costume was one of a kind and only made <laughs> one in existence we we couldn't make multiples of it because we were too busy doing other stuff and so it was just like well how can we do this without um ruining the costume <laughs> um and so they creatively came up with a really great thing and i that... think it it ultimately made it better too because we had trying to oh it was i mean that it. not in to see her lap up that banana lotion was pretty oh. hilarious i know <laughs> but then every it thing. all it always works out that sketch also too like it changed from dress to air so drastically like i in the first time she did it i was on on the floor spraying her with an avion bottle right between <laughs> dress and air mikey and streeter come to me they're like okay now we need you to run in in the middle of the sketch and spray her with avion and run back out and we had never rehearsed it we didn't try it during dress so it was just like god you got this you're gonna do this it's fine i'm like okay i'm glad that it's avion and you don't just throw <laughs> tap water in there. No, no, it's Avion. It's got to be, you know, it's Beyonce. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're fancy. Uh, Jody, one of the sketches I think of when I think of hair was the Bow and Yang doctor sketch with the, the long hair. I think the audience started laughing as soon as he, well, yeah, with the bangs. As soon as he walked out, what was your inspiration for that? And then Ryan Gosling is, is the nurse or the helper, and he also has the wild. Lots. Right. Bowen? That was modeled after you in high school, right, Jody? Oh, Your yeah, look. that's exactly what my right. hair looked like straight down. <laughs> um, Bowen, I think, originally had that idea for himself, actually. Um, um, so that was his inspiration. Um, Ryan had an idea. <laughs> he has a lot of ideas about his wigs. He loves wigs and costumes. He's he's so into it. Um, but he wanted full bangs and and maybe shoulder length and i was able to convince him not to do that because um i said if they change the cards you have to be able to read the cards um and he's like no i'll memorize them and i said no you cannot <laughs> memorize them <laughs> so um i I got him to agree to try to do half. So at least one one eye could read the cue cards because it's live. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. And I don't want to be fired, you know, that <laughs> week. So um, he agreed to do it. And I said, if it, you have to try to trust me. And if it work, I can let you try the full bang. I said, but I'm I'm pretty sure by the time it gets to live, I'm most likely going to cut it. So he agreed to try it with the half bang and he liked that it was at his mouth. So he could, when he spoke originally, he didn't realize it, but when he was speaking, it kept flying. The bang kept flying up and flipping up. And he really thought that was funny. And um, so he agreed to keep it. And that what he actually had a picture and inspiration and I just changed it a little bit. I made it longer and I gave him a half bang. And thank God, because they rewrote it and there was a lot more words and he came off the sketch and he went, oh my God, thank you so much. You're absolutely right. I said, I thought you said you had two lines. He said, I thought I had two lines too. <laughs> so it, it worked out really well and he had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Well, we are almost out of time. I, I would love to just ask one question to each of you. If, if there's a sketch or a moment or or something you created this season that we haven't had time. I mean, I have a whole list here that that um, I would love to chat with you about. Does, does anyone want to go first? Louis, you probably have the most craziest things. So many, I mean. Louis did of... some great stuff with Scooby-Doo for the oh. last episode with Jake Gyllenhaal. 
that Scooby Doo mm, thing was fun. Colin Jost and I wrote that where it's the Scooby Doo episode, and they thinking it's a mask, they accidentally rip someone's face off, and that was <laughs> it. It was. I remember talking to you guys, and it was like it needs to look crazy and shocking but not horrifying <laughs> but just shocking enough to where you're still laughing so i think you guys really found a balance there but i don't mean to speak for you i just wanted to bring that up because that was the last episode it was finding that happy medium between yeah. and comedy and not scaring the audience away from you know laughing at what just happened um <laughs> And and originally I, on Wednesday night, my, there was three of them that got their faces ripped off. And then we started went Thursday morning. We started making three, and then by thir- by Thursday afternoon, they're like, "Ah, it's just gonna be J- uh, James." I'm like, "Oh, thanks." All You're right. like, "I'm sorry about that." <laughs> that rewrite came in late, but it's funny because you'll be writing stuff. We're like, "We think Sarah's gonna get her head cut off," and Louis like, "Yeah, I think we got a spare Sarah head lying around here." <laughs> <laughs> she's had her head severed a lot from this uh, yeah you like, we got a, a couple sarah heads there's always a sarah head and a mikey head laying around somewhere that we can we're always getting decapitated <laughs> uh, jody how about you I, I honestly i think for me i'm i'm proud no matter really what it is when i see that the host or or my cast are so happy in that character that they dreamed up um it makes me so happy and it could be a simple, it could be a simple crew cut or like even when Mikey comes in and he puts a wig on and it's like bleach blonde and it's, he's just like, oh, it's like, he's so happy. <laughs> um, I mean, in one of those, in the Ryan Gosling um, episode, you know, they did the Spanish guys. Um, there was a sketch where the three of them were Spanish. Well, Ryan is just because of his wife, um, you know, but he's American and Keenan. When I put that, cur- it was just a curly flat wig on Keenan. And he was so, ha- his whole face lit up. He was so happy. Ryan Gosling's was, you know, I had built that wig for him and um, it was dark with like these bleached ends and it was wavy and he was so excited. And it, to me, it's just a basic look, but they were so excited in those wigs to help them play those parts. And it's, it's, that's what brings you joy is just helping them find these characters. And you've been a little part of that. And um, it always brings me joy. It's, it's all, all the wigs do when someone, when it works, when it, when it's right and helps make that whole thing come together. Cause it's, it, it takes a lot of us to, to really get it right. And you know Tom, what, what the most amount of wigs you made this season for one episode is? I just uh, Maya, I, if Maya's was, I think if I remember right, she was o- close to, I think, almost 120 hair looks. Yeah. Wait, yeah. that episode was 120? That's yeah. insane. <laughs> for 90 minutes. That's yeah. Insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Tom, I love that the French period sketch. I think it was called Maison du Bang. There oh, were yeah. so many costumes in that one. Oh, so. wow. Well, that one, yeah, that was another, the guy who, who one of my favorite things was, uh, that was another where uh, it all came together once we found the fabric for Kristen's uh, one-legged unitard. <laughs> the person who made that unitard made Beyonce's unitard or Maya's unitard. And, um, yeah, once uh, Ashley, my assistant, found that fabric, I was just like, okay, his, his, this is the entire sketch right here. That one-legged. <laughs> um, and Kristen is so game for that kind of thing and that physicality and just like her coming in next to Chloe and um, I forget, Bowen, I think was Bowen was the guy. And so, you know, it was just... Um, and anytime we can do like, period variety show like is always a fun sort of jump off point mm. and louie i forgot to mention the sarah sherman as the anomalous man i mean it blew <laughs> my mind watching that one that was that was another one we had no idea what that was that look was even going to be till one two o'clock on thursday morning and we had to have it ready by friday 
morning to have oh, a yeah, early Friday. Friday. And the call was like, I think 6 a.m. or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. and just trying to figure that. That's one of those late nights, trying to figure it out, get it all done. And it all came together so, mm -hmm. so fast. Well, and, so and, 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 and we have a little more time on the live show. You know, the film unit, they literally have 24 hours, like 24 hours to get the looks, to fit the looks, to alter the looks, to get them on the people. Um, and that's a big undertaking to make those sets, you know, yeah, um, all of those sets and all those costumes. And, you know, that's another one, the, the visual of that, of that whole thing between hair and makeup, wardrobe, production design, uh, all done within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, so Mikey, close us out here. What, what do you want people to know about your uh, amazing colleagues here? Oh man, that's a big responsibility. Runes for life. Uh, <laughs> I cannot speak highly enough of these individuals. I mean, what they do every single week is, it's ridiculous. You get to Oftentimes they've helped me find looks for sketches and things that ultimately define them, which is fantastic. I I am reminded of that there was a sketch this season. It was cut, but it was Pokemon and myself and a lot of the cast members played. We were like the cartoon Pokemon and I think it was the Josh Brolin episode, but him and Heidi are watching an episode and he's confused because, you know, it's a it's a Pokemon cartoon. But the audience didn't did not love it. <laughs> but in terms of the looks like we weren't based on anyone specific. We just kind of showed all these individuals the script and said we're kind of made up Pokemon characters. So someone in the world. So we need to look like we're in the cartoon and they the looks were fantastic it's a bummer the audience did not were not fans of the sketch because the looks were so great the wigs were awesome the costumes were like just the perfect amount of cartoon and grounded and the makeup in certain people i remember my eyebrows were pink you guys had fake eyebrows <laughs> So I just wanted to bring it up because it was a cut for time sketch. And there's all there's so many sketches that never see the light of day that they all worked so hard on. So that um, specifically comes to mind just in terms of the type of work these three do every week. And also, Tom, this was a few seasons ago. Didn't you make the royal wedding because we wrote a royal wedding sketch oh, yeah. took place yeah. right after the wedding and the wedding was that saturday so in between dress and age, or during dress weren't you watching the royal wedding to see yeah. what everyone was? well it, it, i think that was, yeah so we you wrote a, you wrote that sketch and we weren't going to know anything about that sketch until saturday <laughs> uh, we were trying to guess what yeah. all of it might be because we were following it closely and everyone all the the um you know reporters and everyone were trying to give us hints as to what it might be but of course none of those hints were correct and <laughs> so we saw them i think it was like at 11 o'clock 10 o'clock 11 o'clock on saturday morning uh we finally kicked into gear as to what all these things actually were and had to like change a few things and make a few things and you know but that we literally got we were doing that in real time you know even um, the hair yeah. i just it's yeah and people's hairstyles as well yeah we did yeah. that all so i just wanted to bring that up because that was one of the moments that i just couldn't believe they were able to pull that off mm. but well, wizards all three of these people absolute oh, yeah. wizards and the emmy nominations are coming up we hope we're rooting for all of you of course you. and uh season 50 of saturday night live it's going to be monumental i can't wait to see what you all have planned uh, thank, thank you for joining you. us today thank you so much thanks for having us thank you